awful lot of students find the whole outlining thing just like, you know, um, completely uh, like Greek or something, whereas they love seeing ideas separated in the visual organizer. Um, so, um, this is one reason why we want to be sure that we have educational environments that value, that accept diversity and allow for different ways of presenting information uh, for people. And visual memory, again, the visual memory piece is remembering what stuff looks like, you know. I mean, this would be the sort of, uh, this, a person with a nonverbal learning disability taking an art history course, I, you know, I remember in college taking art, art history 101, you know, with like Western civilization, and then the exam would be, you know, we used to call it darkness at noon, and they just show <laughs> pictures of, you know, all these famous paintings, and you were supposed to identify them, and so on. That is a really challenging task for somebody with NLD, because, you know, what is, <clears throat> what is very clear to someone who has a very clear visual perceptual field uh, can be utterly, utterly overwhelming for someone who has these kind of visual, um, visual issues and, and, and can't remember, you know, what the difference is between this Monet path painting, this early Monet and this late Monet or something like that. And then, of course, spatial orientation, where you are in space. That's going to impact a lot of things. That's going to impact how close you stand to somebody when you're talking to them. It's going to impact, um, you know, if you're running on a track, being able to stay in your own lane. Um, it's going to impact your driving. And, um, and, and a number of things like that. And of course, learning geography, geometry is really going to be um, hard because shapes and angles and so on. Um, I keep wanting to go back to my trusty, um, you know, mouse and so on. And I have this nice thing here. Questions about that? Does that make sense? Yes. My daughter seems like she's. Kind of classic NLB, but visual memory, for example. So money's really hard for her. Yeah, so that's yeah, right. Forever to figure out what a penny was. Good example. Good great example. Years. But if you look at across the street and say, "What kind of dog is that?" She goes, "Oh, that's a Lhasa Apso." Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, what, which has an interest in, and she can actually capture the different features of dogs and get that. Which is similar to people, you know, who have ADHD, who classically will be able to focus endlessly on something they're really interested in, but completely, you know, are completely spaced out and distracted by things that they find, you know, boring. It's a different kind of, you know, it's, it shows up differently, but yeah, I mean, so, and that's also executive function because when, um, when the, um, when you're focusing attention, you can't regulate it or shift it very easily, then you're going to naturally glom on to the things that are really interesting and uh, appealing to you. So you, know, you might be able to learn dog breeds perfectly because that's very you know, salient. On the other hand, you know, learning to identify you know, different, different values of money and different coins and stuff, it's, you know, it's kind of boring and brains don't, you know, Thing, I mean, brain our, most anyone isn't all that attentive to the features of a penny. If I asked you all right now to write down every feature of a penny, chances of, I'd be surprised if anyone could get them all. Because, I mean, you know, it's not that important. It's a penny. But, um, <clears throat> but if you can't tell the difference between a penny and a nickel, that that can be that can be an issue, or between a five dollar and a ten dollar bill, um, again, more struggle. So thank you. That's good examples. Um, here, you know, I'm going to turn. I'm um, sorry, Jacob, but I'm going to do this again because I want people to really look at this slide. So this is kind of this is a rough approximation of what it might be like 
when you're looking at math problems, say, um, you know, here, um, we've got, you know, these are sort of numbers and symbols and stuff, but, um, but whereas they're pro they probably are meant to be linear or, you know, horizontal or vertical, but somebody who doesn't process uh, visuals, uh, whose visual processing is slow and impaired, it's going to look like a jumble. And so math can be a real, really struggle for people with this, um, this particular profile. Um, and then here again, too, here we have a, a, a you know, a word, uh, you know, a picture of all these coffee cups, and we're supposed to do, what are we supposed to do? Is it 3 plus 5 or 33 times 3 or 5 versus 3? What? They're just numbers, and they don't make a lot of sense. So, you know, here again, 1,000 or 10,000, it's just another zero, you know, one way or another, but it makes a huge difference. So these are the kinds of issues um, that students will have with math when they have visual processing uh, difficulties. And you know, to a person who's processing it perfectly, you know, in a in a you know a perfectly average uh, speed and function and so on, you look at the thing and think, why can't she see that? You know, that looks so it's so clear. But it's not. It's just not. <clears throat> so these are the kinds of things that I suspect a lot of teachers don't know about or understand. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry. So if I'm understanding you correctly, then, the way that my son is seeing a math problem is jumbled. Could be. Like that? Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Could be, and it's very easy to mess up to mess up signs because they all, you know, there's an X or a plus, there's yeah. a minus, yeah. and if it's division, it's got these two little dots, and who knows, you know? But yes, very likely. So, just simply the way they're processing the visual, you know, what's on the page or the screen, can be uh, can really be what's what 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 causes difficulty. Yeah. How much do you know about critical visual impairment? And is it possible to have critical visual impairment and nonverbal learning disability? I have to tell you, I don't, I'm not a psychologist, neuropsychologist, and so cortical, cortical visual impairment I'm not an expert at. It may be. Um, it may be. It is possible to have a nonverbal learning disability and to have a language based learning disability. We used to think that they were mutually exclusive, but they're not. So you can imagine the issues that somebody with both of those, um, both of those syndromes, the kinds of uh, things they have to go through. Yes. Will you be going over some strategies of how to help yes. a student <clears throat> unscramble that? Yes. Right. Or well, some yes, some strategies to help students. Um, have a, an easier time processing. Yes, definitely, definitely. But you know, it, it, I think we, we live in a world that's increasingly uh, less print-based and more, you know, visual digital. And um, and I think we have to be careful when, especially with developing brains and children who are in school and so on, that we, um, that we don't just push that at them, that we have some other, you know, that we have alternative ways of presenting information and that that's actually just fine, uh, too, which I'll get to here. Um, you know, I mean, <coughs> Things like numbers jumbling around put the math problems on graph paper where they line up easily in columns. You know, that's a pretty, that's a very standard, very low-tech solution. You know, 
because there, you know, we're not measuring anything about what the student understands about computation here. We're just measuring whether the student can see the numbers lined up. And things. Yes. Well, that sounds pretty good at now. Mm -hmm. He prefers to do it in his head and not. I try to get a line up this call to do this if he wants to do it in his head. Yeah. Where that's common. Yeah, uh, oh, uh, it, it's incredibly common. Uh, I, I have never, I rarely find a student who loves to show work, but